uh, administration was bought out of that by Steve Parrish, um, avoided relegation and is now in the Premier League. So there is always hope in the darkest hours. Because we understand how important football clubs are to our local communities, the Government led, uh, launched its fan-led review of football governance, and we are working at pace to respond to the Honourable Member for Chatham and Aylesford's excellent report. Turning to Derby County, the current situation is a worrying one for fans, the local community and football alike. No one wants to see one of the founding members of the Football League in administration and th facing threats to its survival. Uh, Derby, of course, has won. Derby County has won silverware in the past, and uh, I'd like to pay tribute to, uh, to Wayne Rooney for his sterling work as manager this season. We should be clear that go I didn't thought, thought I hear myself saying uh, those words in the House of Commons, but I do. <laughs> we should be clear that governance surrounding the administration of Derby County Football Club is a matter for the English Football League, the administrator, and the club. But the government takes a very close interest in this and is receiving regular updates. The sports minister, my honourable friend for Mid Worcestershire, spoke to the English Football League just last night to understand exactly what is going on and to urge all parties involved to take a pragmatic approach to securing the future of the Rams. And I call upon the English Football League, the club and the administrators to play an active and urgent role within their remits in seeking to facilitate an urgent solution to this situation. The EFL have asked the administrators for details of a funding plan that will enable the club to complete the current season. The administrators have tabled some options available to them, and the EFL have extended their deadline for proof of funding, in line with the EFL regulations and policy. I understand there are some bidders interested in purchasing the club, and I very much hope that those conversations reach a fruitful conclusion as quickly as possible. The EFL has issued an extensive and transparent update on their handling of the matter yesterday, which I commend to the House. Of course, this matter raises questions about the wider financial sustainability of football. Uh, the fan-led review made a number of proposals directly addressing how to prevent clubs ending up in situations like this, and we are carefully considering those recommendations. But we have endorsed, in principle, the primary recommendation of the review that football requires a strong, independent regulator to secure the future of the national game. In the meantime, Mr Deputy Speaker, the Government, and in particular my honourable friend the Sports Minister, will continue to engage closely with the EFL and indeed members, particularly those representing the fine county of Derbyshire, and will continue to urge urgent pragmatism from all parties involved to quickly find a solution and save this fantastic club. Back to Pauline Latham. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Minister for his words. Um, I have spoken to the Sports Minister myself last night, and I would like to place on record that many of my colleagues from Derbyshire are completely supportive of what we are doing to try and save the club. Derby County Football Club cannot be allowed to be removed from the, by the EFL on the 1st of February. If this can happen to Derby, one of the founder clubs of the Football League in 1888, it can happen to any of the other 71 clubs. These clubs are so much more than businesses. They represent the heart and soul of communities. Nowhere more so than in Derby. Not only that, they are huge drivers of economic growth and are part of the cultural fabric of our county, of our country. So can the Minister assure me that in his discussions with the EFL, he has been assured, reassured that they are acting in the best interests of Derby County's fans? I understand that there are ongoing legal proceedings between Derby and other clubs. However, the reason that potential takeovers cannot happen is because the EFL is refusing to rule on whether these claims could constitute football debts. A matter for EFL rules and not for the courts. So will the Minister confirm why the EFL is refusing to rule on this? If the EFL cannot rule or will not rule on this, Derby County believe that they could rely on new insolvency rules approved by this Parliament to exit administration. Please could the Minister confirm that he will be investigating 
why the EFLs in Solverson guidelines are not up to date, causing such difficulties for Derby County. Furthermore, despite their delay effectively holding up the takeover, the EFL appear to have set an arbitrary deadline of the 1st of February, at which point they can remove Derby from the League. Is the Minister convinced that the EFL is acting fast enough to resolve the football debts issue before the deadline, or will they extend that deadline accordingly? Finally, I would like to mention the administrators of the club. Fans have no accountability mechanisms over these individuals, who themselves have no connection to the club. Please can the Minister assure me that he is in constant contact with the administrators to ensure they are acting in the fans' best interests and as quickly as possible. Well, I thank the Honourable Lady uh, for, her, for her question. She is, as always, an outstanding advocate for Derbyshire and matters which concern her constituents and football fans across the county and the broader region. I agree entirely with the Honourable Lady's point. Football clubs are an integral part of the fabric of their local communities. I certainly feel that in South London with uh, Crystal Palace, and I know, I know colleagues across the House will feel the same uh, regarding their football clubs, and their constituents will certainly feel the same as well. Um, in relation to the English Football League, uh, my honourable friend, the Sports Minister, has been in close contact with them. Uh, we do want to see the English Football League work urgently and pragmatically and rapidly to resolve these outstanding issues which are in the way of a uh, a takeover by a new owner who we hope can invest the money needed to turn the club around. Uh, he is pressing the English Football League very hard on these points. I'm sure he'll do so again, and I'm sure the English Football League will be listening to our proceedings this afternoon, will hear the message coming from this House, and will act accordingly. Uh, in relation to the Honourable Lady's final point about the administrators, uh, I'm afraid I don't know if the Sport Minister has spoken to the administrators yet, but since she has raised the point um, so forcefully and so eloquently, I will certainly um, ask the Sports Minister to do so uh, as soon as I'm out of the chamber this afternoon. Alex Davis Jones. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I am grateful to the Honourable Member for Mid Derbyshire for bringing this urgent matter to the House today. Once again, one of our great historic football clubs is in danger, a founder member of the Football League. This is not the fault of the players and staff who have performed remarkably in the circumstances. It is not the fault of fans, but once again, it is the fault of mismanagement of owners. It is an example of the problem identified by the Honourable Member for Chatham and Aylesford in the fan-led review of football governance. Owners gambling everything on aiming for Premier League status without proper safeguards in place, leaving the club in danger. It is further evidence that football governance is broken and that we urgently need the changes recommended in the fan-led review. We appreciate that the specifics of the current situation at Derby County are complex and that there are a number of parties involved, the EFL, potential buyers, administrators, other clubs making claims to legal challenges, and Labour urges all of those parties to work together to sort this out. But even bearing that in mind, can I urge the Minister and the Sports Minister to do everything within their power to secure the club's future for the sake of fans, players, staff, the city and the wider community? The question that many fans will be asking is how did we get here again? The Honourable Member for Chatham and Aylesford's review has already put forward a strong set of recommendations that would overhaul football governance for the better. While introducing a new statutory independent regulator requires new legislation, a shadow regulator fulfilling the same function could be introduced straight away. Such a regulator could have flagged up the issues that put Derby County in jeopardy long before we got to where we are today. The Government have said that it will respond fully to the review's recommendations in spring. But would the Minister just accept that this latest crisis demonstrates that spring is just too long to wait? Isn't this crisis more compelling evidence that the Government need to act quickly to implement the recommendations of the fan-led review and to ensure that football has a governance regime that safeguards our great clubs and our national game? And, well, I thank the Shadow Minister for her question. Um, and clearly, uh, my colleague, the Sport Minister, is doing everything he can to uh, urge the various participants, particularly the English Football League, but also the administrators and the other clubs involved, to find a resolution to this very complicated situation. Um, I would also add just two points. Firstly, uh, I certainly would not tar all football owners um, with the 
same brush. Uh, I mean, the, 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 those uh, those clubs I know about, particularly Palace, have been actually very uh, well managed. So I don't think you can you can say that football owners as a whole um, conduct themselves uh, badly. I would also add that the problems at Derby County uh, are long-standing. They've been around for a long time. They long predate the fan-led review. Um, but we are uh, we are moving at pace to make sure the fan-led review is implemented, and that work will happen as quickly as possible. Tracy Crouch. May I congratulate my honourable friend from Mid Derbyshire for securing this urgent question and also pay tribute to her Derbyshire colleagues, some of whom are unable to speak in this debate, who I know are equally concerned uh, as she is. Um, my own inbox is full of Rams fans who are understandably concerned about the perilous situation they find their football club in. The Football Review Panel met with Mel Morris nearing the end of the process and after the interim recommendations were published, and I asked him specifically if there was already an independent regulator and real-time financial monitoring in place, did he think that the club would be in a different situation? And his answer was yes, without a doubt. So given clubs think that the recommendations in the review would lead to greater sustainability in football, could the minister, who I appreciate is standing in for the sports minister, actually give a bit more detail about the pace uh, in which uh, the implementation of the report's uh, recommendations is being considered and will be responded to? Because many would argue, including myself and others in this House, um, that it, it, there is an urgent need so that no other club and its loyal, committed, lifelong fans will suffer the threat of ceasing to exist. Well, Mr. Deputy Speaker, let me start by uh, paying tribute to the member, the Honourable Member for Chatham and Ellsford, for the tremendous work she has done in convening uh, the fan led review and producing such a comprehensive and detailed report. I mean, I can assure uh, her and the House that my colleague, the Sport Minister, is working on this as a matter of urgency. But there are a lot of, and we've accepted the key principles already, which are in the fan led review. It is a very detailed review. There are a large number of detailed recommendations. We want to make sure we get the response right uh, while doing it as quickly as possible. Uh, so I can assure her that work is happening very quickly. I'd be very happy to ask the Sports Minister to meet with her to discuss the implementation timetable, but I spoke to him earlier this afternoon and he is fully seized of the need to move fast. Margaret Beckett. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, I can confirm everything that the Honourable Lady from Mid Derbyshire has said about the importance of this issue in the city of Derby and indeed, as you can see, from the members attending here today across the whole area. Uh, long ago, when this all first began, uh, I was one of those who took part in a meeting with the Football League in which they assured us of their earnest desire to see this matter resolved uh, and Derby County continue. He said in his opening remarks that nobody wants to see the club go under. Well, some of us are beginning to wonder. And can I assure him and through him, I hope, the Football League, that if inadvertently, because the Football League was unable to remove the obstacles, which at the moment they appear to be so firmly putting in Derby County's way, if inadvertently this were to happen, none of those participating in it will be forgiven. Well, I think the Right Honourable Lady makes her point with both power and eloquence. I certainly echo her sentiments, and as I said in my opening comments, I hope the English Football League and the other clubs involved in this saga and the administrators are listening to our proceedings this afternoon, are listening to the message the Honourable Lady just gave that I, I think probably commands support across the House. I hope they listen and I hope they act accordingly. Julian Knight. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, it's a little over a year ago that I and the Minister of Sport were in almost daily communication about the EFL and its financial crisis. And uh, through those actions and through the actions of the Select Committee uh, and the public hearings we gave, we, we dragged the Premier League kicking and screaming into a £250 million deal to bail out the EFL. In the light of that, does my old friend agree with me that it is beholden on the EFL which has benefited from financial help itself in the past, to show decency and understanding to Derby County Football Club, yeah, yeah. a former league champions club. In this, there are the need, and what's more, we do need to speed up the review into football and get that onto the statute book. We all know that there is limited time uh, to bring legislation forward, but this is clearly of an urgent priority. Uh, I wonder whether the old friend will actually commit today to give us a timetable for when that legislation will come forward. 
Um, well, I thank the uh, Select Committee Chairman for his uh, question. Uh, clearly, he is echoing the sentiments so powerfully expressed by um, the Right Honourable uh, Member for uh, Derby South in her comments a few moments ago. And, uh, there is a significant burden on the English Football League and on the other clubs involved to get this matter sorted out urgently. I agree with his sentiments in that regard. In relation to timing, uh, clearly there are a number of uh, details that need to be worked through. The recommendations of the fan-led review were very detailed. Uh, it will require primary legislation, and as the Select Committee Chairman will know, uh, there are a number of pressing legislative priorities the Government needs to work through. I can't make a commitment on behalf of my, comment, my colleague. I think it would be wrong to commit a, a fellow Minister in his portfolio area. But I will ask the, the Sports Minister to speak to the Select Committee Chairman, um, as well as the Honourable Member for Chatham and Aylesford, to discuss timing. Jamie Perkins. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. I have to say that there will be real disappointment amongst Derby County fans that the Sports Minister was not here to respond. I understand what has been said about him being on a Bill Committee, but I think arrangements could have been made. Uh, well, it would be good to hear from him, because it, with the greatest respect to the Minister, he has not been able to answer the fundamental question here. He has spoken about Crystal Palace, the previous problems they had, but there is one thing that is different about this particular uh, situation, and that is the threat of legal action from Middlesbrough and Wickham and the impact uh, that those um, commitments that may exist in the future is having on the, uh, on the possibility uh, of a takeover happening now. So can uh, the Minister tell us what the Sports Minister is actually doing to ensure that the issue of these Wickham and Middlesbrough um, claims against the previous owners does not prevent Derby County uh, from being purchased, because uh, it is when clubs have debts in the future that they go out of existence altogether, as we saw with Glasgow Rangers and Bury. Uh, clubs that have debts in the past, it can be resolved. But that is the key question we need to hear about today. Uh, well, I think, if I may say respectfully, the Honourable Member's comments about the Sports Minister at the beginning of his question were rather unfair. The Sports Minister was in a bill committee taking primary legislation through Parliament, and he has actually now arrived on the front bench having completed that important task. So I think that, if I may say, that was an extremely unfair um, remark. In relation to the other football clubs, there are legal proceedings which are currently pending, but I think there should be a pragmatic solution found. And I know the Sports Minister has been in touch with the English Football League about finding a pragmatic solution. There were actually similar issues with uh, Crystal Palace 11 years ago. It was to do with, I think it was Lloyds Bank at the time. And again, a pragmatic solution was found. And I expect, I expect the same pragmatism to be displayed here. And finally, the fan-led review uh, does touch on some of these issues about debts. And when that is implemented, it will address the issues that he is raising. Here, here. Nigel Mills. Thank you. It's a pity we can't have a substitution of the Minister now he's turned up, but on the football pitch that might be allowed, but, but not here. Um, the Minister um, says he's a, and I, I know he is a keen football fan, does he, like me, remember how close Middlesbrough came to going out of business until they were saved by Steve Gibson a couple of decades ago? And wouldn't it be ironic now, actually, if his claim, which many of us think is probably a, a stretch, was what pushed Derby County over it? Would he urge Middlesbrough and Wickham, a spirit of football solidarity, like fans are showing, to actually not press those claims and try and actually uh, let the owners, uh, let new owners be found. And would you agree, actually, the government may need to act because we cannot have in our elite professional leagues one club suing another if they don't like the outcome of the season. That's no way of having any a sports competition that's in. Integral. I mean, I, I, I actually won't know until years go on what the final title decider would have been if we're going to have legal cases to decide this after the effect. Um, well, I thank the member for his question. There are obviously legal proceedings ongoing, uh, but I think it would serve everybody's interests, the interests of football more generally, as well as Derby County in particular, if those involved did show pragmatism and help a proud and long-standing club survive. As I said a few moments ago, when Crystal Palace were in a similar situation, the bank concerned did show pragmatism, and I call on all those involved, including other clubs, to show the same kind of pragmatism. Dan Jarvis. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Derby County is the latest club to find itself in difficulty, but without major and urgent reform, it won't be the last. The system is broken when the club finishing the bottom of the Premier League receives ten times more than the club at the top of the Championship receives. 
despite them being separated by just one place in the football pyramid. So can I ask the Minister what work is being done to ensure that English Football League clubs are put on a financially sound footing, including agreeing an equitable distribution of the TV money? Um, well, I think the Honourable uh, Gentleman is raising an important point. One of the issues addressed via the fan led review is precisely the question that he refers to. And I know as the Sports Minister works through the response to the fan led review, uh, answers to that reasonable and important question will be forthcoming. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Although I'm a Leicestershire MP, uh, many of my constituents are, have written to me. They're loyal supporters of Derby County and they're hugely concerned about the future of the club. Derby County is in administration and it has accrued. A um, built up um, £30 million worth of tax liabilities under the previous owner. If this club goes into liquidation, those monies due to the Treasury will be at risk. Given this really quite huge uh, financial vested interest of the Government in the survival of Derby County, what are they doing to ensure the obstacles to a successful takeover are removed uh, so that this secures the future of this iconic uh, football club and also secures those money is due to the Treasury. Well, I think we have to. I mean, the, the, tre the Treasury, HMT or HMRC, I should say, the Revenue and Customs, as an unsecured uh, creditor, uh, is like any other unsecured creditor, and the administrator will treat them fairly and even handedly as they would treat any creditor in this situation. I don't think the existence uh, of that debt, amongst, amongst other debts, it is the obstacle to getting the transaction completed. There are other issues to do with outstanding legal proceedings uh, and other matters that the EFL are responsible for, which are more immediate obstacles. And that is why I repeat my call um, for the EFL and those other clubs like Middlesbrough to pragmatically get this situation resolved as quickly as possible. Clive Betts. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I think we can all, as football fans, feel for the fans of Derby County. We can feel what it would be like if our club was in this position, with all that history uh, and our fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers supporting the club, which is about to disappear. We have to feel for that. It's unthinkable that Derby should go out of existence, yeah. but it was unthinkable that Bury should go out of existence, and look what happened to them. But this really is just another example of the complete mess that football finances is. Yeah. You think, you know, why, why are the rules about administration in place? Because a few years ago, Leicester City deliberately went into administration to get rid of their debts, to enable them to get promoted to the Premiership at the expense of Sheffield United. It's a complete mess. So there are two issues that come out of this, Mr Deputy Speaker. Get the Crouch Review, the fan led Review, in place as quickly as possible to sort football fans, uh, finances out. And in the meantime, get the EFL, who have got some sympathy with the difficulties they face, to do a proportionate and proper response to Derby to make sure this club survives. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we, can all, we all agree, without question, that the steps to ensure Derby County's survival uh, must be taken as quickly as possible. In relation to the wider points made about football finance and the situation he mentioned a few years ago, uh, just a point again to the fan-led review led by my honourable friend, the member for Chatham and Ellsford. It is precisely to deal with those kind of issues that the Honourable Member quite, quite rightly raises that the review was initiated and why my Honourable Friend, the Sports Minister, is going to be acting upon it. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I pay tribute to the member for Mid Derbyshire for securing this urgent question. Um, like a number of local MPs, uh, I met with the EFL yesterday, and as a Derbyshire MP, I have many constituents who have written to me. And I have to say, following that meeting, I could not help but share some of the suspicions outlined by the Right Honourable Lady, because it did not feel to me like the EFL were really putting fans at the heart of this and putting our communities front and foremost. So I, I know the, the Honourable uh, the, the Minister is unable to respond directly, but does the Department have faith in the EFL that it is a fair arbiter and has fans in mind? Well, I think it is very, very important that the EFL and the other participants in this saga act quickly to ensure a successful uh, resolution. Uh, the proof of the pudding, as always, is in the eating, and let's uh, let's hope and indeed let's expect those results follow very soon. Donald. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, as a, a lifelong uh, borough fan, uh, can I say to the honourable mm -hmm. member from Mid Derbyshire, there isn't anybody 
No Middlesbrough Football Club fan wants to see uh, Derby County, a great football club, go into administration and exit the league. There are great links between our clubs, not least of which were personified by the great uh, Brian Clough. Uh, but I know the Minister is doing his best, but the details of this are complicated. There is a, there a potential uh, claim here, and, the, and it's founded in the mismanagement of Derby by its previous owners. They offended against the rules and they were punished as a result, and this is why we're in this position uh, today. But if I could urge the Minister uh, to familiarise himself with the statement of Middlesbrough Football Club, who have said that they've made it clear that they don't want to see Derby fall into liquidation and that Middlesbrough Football Club is happy to be realistic in its expectations in order for Derby to exit administration. So can I encourage the Minister to encourage the EFL, EFL to encourage the, ad the administrator to engage with Middlesbrough who are being very realistic about how they can assist in this process, but at the moment they're being met with silence. Yeah, well, I think the member raises a very uh, important and a very reasonable point. Uh, my honourable mem friend, the, the sports minister, has just uh, confirmed to me that in his conversations last night with the English Football League, he called upon the English Football League to facilitate exactly the kind of conversation the honourable gentleman just mentioned, and it is our hope that those conversations reach a resolution very quickly. The statement the member just read out from Middlesbrough Football Club is encouraging, but obviously actions will speak louder than words here. Brendan Clark Smith. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. As a very proud Nottinghamian, I didn't think I'd see the day I would stand in this chamber defending Derby County Football Club. <laughs> And whilst much has been made of the, the government's which, governance, which is clearly a, an issue, I think most football fans up and down this country look at the financial fair play system, the sanctions for that, and of course points deductions, and see it generally as, as a mess, really. Um, so I just wonder, does the Minister agree with me that the, the rules on this from the EFL need to be clearer, punishments need to be done in a consistent and timely manner, and that the EFL must learn lessons for this to avoid it happening in the future? Uh, well, I think my honourable friend raises once again some important points, and uh, I'm sure uh, fans of uh, Derby County are going to be grateful to him for his magnanimity in, uh, in the way that he uh, framed his remarks a moment ago. Um, but the, the, uh, the issues he's raising uh, will, I believe, be picked up via the fan-led review uh, to make sure these risks don't arise again. Alex Silver. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, as a Leeds United supporter, I know all about having a renegade owner racking up uh, hundreds of millions of pounds in transfer fees to gamble on sporting success. One of the underlying issues um, of uh, Derby County and other clubs who face difficulty is huge inflated transfer fees. Has the Sports Minister considered looking at the role of agents uh, who are unlicensed and unregulated, and there is no cap on the levy of the transfer fees they can receive to help calm this and stop this um, financial um, escalator that we're seeing in transfer fees. Yeah, look, I think the uh, honourable gentleman uh, raises an important issue. Uh, I know a number of people have concerns about the role that agents play, uh, not least football clubs, managers, and indeed sometimes players themselves. It is a slightly I'll uh, choose my words diplomatically, Mr Deputy Speaker. Let's say it's an opaque, uh, I was going to say murky, but let's say it's an opaque business. Um, and uh, I know again that as the Sports Minister responds to the fan-led review, this is the, an issue that he will be addressing. Damien Collins. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. It, it is the failure of football governance that has created the problem at Derby. And once again, it's the fans who see in this crisis that no one is interested in their concerns or the long-term future of the club and the impact this will have on the people of Derby. If the EFL had enforced its own financial rules effectively, this wouldn't have happened. And yet it is the EFL's own rules that will trigger the expulsion of Derby from the league by insisting all football debts and liabilities are met. The regulator that my honourable friend, Member for Chatham, has established in her report would have stopped this happening, but it's not going to stop it before the 1st of February. Is the Minister prepared to consider what other direct intervention DCMS might take in order to keep Derby County in business? Well, look, I, th I think if the, uh, if, the, if the system currently in place uh, was, was functioning perfectly or, or properly, there would have been no need for the fan-led reviews. There are, there are certainly uh, shortcomings, as the Member for Folkestone and Hive, uh, my honourable friend, points out, which the fan-led review is designed to address. In relation to the 
uh, current situation and the way that the EFL rules may have precipitated or may have, may have triggered uh, the circumstances we're currently in, I would again repeat my call, and indeed the call I think of all members of this House on both sides, for pragmatism by those involved, including the EFL, uh, to get this matter resolved as quickly as possible to save a great club. Clay Vafford. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. We, we all accept the special uh, role that football clubs have in their local communities, but they are treated like businesses like any other business, and that is what is at the heart of this problem, that the EFL are trying to deal with, under their rules with clubs as they are currently constituted under company law makes it very difficult for them to intervene in this process. So, if we'd had the uh, uh, f football regulator in place with the rules that have been asked for, regulations that have been asked for, this problem wouldn't have, ris w w have arisen. So, that w I've heard plenty, plenty of times from the Minister that, that, that they, are, they are determined to bring this in as quickly as possible and see that regulator put in place. But it doesn't just require DCMS to be saying that, it does require legislation, primary legislation, that involves other departments. So can he give us an assurance that they, those other departments are applying the same urgency as DCMS? Yeah, well, um, the Honourable Member is, is quite right. Uh, it does require primary legislation. And the Sports Minister, who is on the front bench next to me, is working through plans for that at the moment. Uh, as I said uh, a few moments ago, uh, the proposals are in some areas quite complicated, and we need to make sure we get this right. Obviously, it would be terrible if we... Uh, react too quickly and don't get the details right and end up not fixing the problem. Uh, so I do know that the government's intention is to legislate as quickly as we can, but we want to make sure we get this right to avoid this situation occurring again in the future. Thomason. Whilst football finance expert Kieran Maguire warned the EFL in 2018, it was 19 months before the EFL issued financial fair play charges, allowing the situation to escalate out of control far too long. For the sake of Derby fans, we need the Minister to take urgent action getting the EFL, Mel Morris, potential owners, Middlesbrough and Wickham together to thrash out a deal in a room, throw the key away until something has been sorted. It is in no one's interest to see the future of such a proud club under immediate threat of folding. Yeah, well, look, I, I share my honourable friend's uh, call for urgency. Uh, the Sports Minister, as I said before, spoke to the EFL just last night. And I know the Sports Minister will be continuing to press participants in this saga urgently and forcefully to get resolution. And I just repeat my call on all of those involved, the EFL, other clubs like Middlesbrough, the administrators, to demonstrate flexibility and pragmatism to get this sorted out. And my honourable friend, the Sports Minister, will be driving that forward. Laura. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Now, as a um, Newcastle United fan, I know something of sorrow and frustration, and I have huge sympathy for uh, Derby County. But this government has repeatedly failed to act over issues of financial sustainability and effective governance in our national game. And they're now dragging their feet when it comes to the response to the fan-led review of football. So does the minister really think that the pace of, of the government's response is, is equals the importance of football in the lives of my mm. constituents? And will he commit to putting fans at the top of the football pyramid? Yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I, I don't accept the allegation that the government has been dragging its feet. It was the government that commissioned the fan-led review in the first place. We have accepted its recommendations in principle, and the detailed work is now taking place to get it implemented. As I said in response to a previous question, we need to make sure the details are right. And so while acting with urgency, we don't want to act so fast that any sort of mistake is made in the legislation. In terms of putting fans at the centre of this, I think the clue is in the name. It's a fan-led review. James Daly. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. My right honourable friend from Mid Derbyshire said during her uh, excellent contribution that this could happen to anybody if it happened to Derby. Well, it did. It happened to Berry Football Club. And when it happened to Berry Football Club, the fans paid the price. It was the fault of the owners and it was not the fault of the fans. Now, when that process happened, and I, as a number of people on the front bench know, I was intimately involved in that, the English Football League did not care. 
They did not care about any of the thousands of fans of Berry Football Club who were impacted by their decision to expel Berry Football Club from the league. This is not the local branch of Tesco's we're talking about. Football clubs are engines for social and economic good. They are the history and heartbeat of, of communities, and I don't have the words to describe the impact upon thousands of people in my constituency of, this, of, my, of Berry Football Club disappearing. So this is the time for the English Football League to show that they care. Not what they did with Bury. They destroyed a club. They nearly destroyed a town. I am not under, underscoring that. That's how much of an impact this had. And so I would urge the Minister, do whatever is necessary to protect those fans of Derby. I have seen on a daily basis in my constituency what this does to the fans of a football club who care and love that club and care and love their town. This is bigger than all the rules in the world. This has got to be sorted out. Please do everything possible to protect Derby fans and please do not make the mistakes of what happened with Berry. Yeah. Well, I think there is agreement across the House that uh, what happened to Berry Football Club was, was a catastrophe for the local community, and we must make sure uh, the same does not happen to Derby County. And uh, all of us around the house on both sides will, will understand how devastating it is when a local football club disappears, as Berry did. And let us, hope, let us hope and let us take action to make sure that never happens again. I'm very sorry to hear his assessment of the EFL's conduct in the, in, in the Berry Football Club situation, and I can only repeat my plea to the EFL, or my demand of the EFL, that they act rapidly and pragmatically. Uh, once again, to make sure these things don't happen again, uh, the independent fan-led review and our, the government's response to it is vital. And just to be clear and to clarify, the government accepts the principle of an independent uh, regulator and is studying very carefully the other recommendations and will be responding as soon as they can. Tony Lloyd. No. Mr Deputy Speaker, the, uh, I wholeheartedly endorse the remarks from the Honourable Member for Berry. Um, the Minister makes the point that there are good owners of football clubs. There are. Rochdale, my town club, certainly has those. There are bad owners as well. And the AFL has failed consistently to operate its duty in terms of the fit and proper person test. The message that the, the Sports Minister has got to give to the AFL is there is no confidence in their, con their ability to, to go to, for the governance of football. That message has got to go out because in the meantime, whilst we wait the fan-led review being turned into legal force, we've got to make sure there is real pressure on the EFL to make sure we don't lose another great club of our football system. Well, the Honourable Member makes a very powerful and eloquent point. And as I said in response to the points made by the Honourable uh, Member for Derby, North, uh, Derby South earlier, uh, I'm sure the EFL are listening to our proceedings this afternoon, and I am certain they will act accordingly. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And while it's true I'm a proud Motherwell fan, my in-laws, uh, Ron and Alison Wright, constituents of the Honourable Member for Mid Derbyshire, are proud Derby County fans and are very proud of their club's history and place in the town. And can I ask the Minister, uh, as Derby County tried to play out of their 21-point penalty, does he agree that there's a bit of a catch-22 here for a team to try and play for their survival while they can't play, keep players in the face of such financial and legal uncertainty? Uh, yeah, I mean, the Honourable Lady is right. It is a difficult situation to suffer a 21-point penalty. Uh, back in 2010, I think uh, Crystal Palace, my team, had a 10-point penalty and they avoided relegation on the final day of the season. Um, but I, I you know, hope, that, hope and uh, demand, really, that Derby County uh, continue and survive, and uh, I hope they continue fighting on, and I know they'll show the spirit required to get every single point they can as they, as they, fight, for, as they fight for not survival as a club, but survival in the Championship. And, you know, I, uh, I wish them every bit of good luck in doing that. I'd like to thank the Minister for... Sorry? Uh, in a second. I'd like to thank the Minister for coming off the subs bench in order to take the urgent. I don't know who said uh, football is a matter of life and death, and somebody said, no, it's way more important Bill than Shankly. that. Bill Shankly. Who was it? Bill Shankly. Shankly, there we are. So I think uh, today's urgent question proved that admirably. Um, point of order. 
Mr Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for, for standing in bravely, but I do think this was a petition that specifically went to the Sports Minister, and I think it will be a, a matter of huge regret that the perspective that the Sports Minister could have given uh, to this urgent question he wasn't able to do. And I just wonder in future, I've been here and we've had statements at different times, uh, whether in future we could ask the Government in, in these matters that are of such importance to people to try and find a way to work with the Opposition, either to delay the Bill Committee or to delay the, the statement, so that the Minister could have been here to respond. I really feel, uh, for the sake of my constituents, who are incredibly worried about the future of Derby County, that we would have had a different response if the Sports Minister had had an opportunity to respond. So I'm not meaning to be mean to anyone, uh, but I just wonder if Government and the Speaker could in future uh, work to try and make sure that the relevant Minister could be here in matters of this importance. Feature of urgent question. Um, does, does the Minister want to come in on? Shall I just take it? Okay. Yep. Further to that point of order. Mr Deputy Speaker, um, I, I think the Honourable Member may be confusing two points. I am aware that there is a petition being processed at this moment in time. Today's response was a UQ. I am sorry I was unable to be at the dispatch box. That was because I did have other business scheduled in the House. The Charities Bill, which was scheduled for a long time, unfortunately, literally by a few minutes, the time did not allow. I thank my Honourable Friend uh, for standing in for me. As always, as I hope I have proven over the last two years in this role, I am always open to discussion to any colleague on any side of the House. I have had many conversations with colleagues relating to Derby County. I would happily speak to the Honourable Gentleman, because there is nothing party political about this issue. You, and we all need to work together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't think I have to add anything further to uh, the response that we've just heard. At this moment in time, we should have had the presentation of a bill, but I do not see the member present. No, it's a different one, uh, Ian. So, if that's not present, we will now move on to the 10 minute rule motion. And, of course, Ian Paisley is here. Ian Paisley. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, as ever, for your kindness. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to grant a right of access to the digital devices of dead or incapacitated persons to their next of kin and four connected